Hello, Michael here again with another RenderMan tutorial. This time I'm going to be talking about the AA Ocean shader for creating water with RenderMan. Um, it's a pretty good little shader, um, as you can see with this example that I made today really quickly. Um, you can get a pretty effective and convincing looking water surface. Um, but there is something I will um, let you know straight off the bat. If you're looking for an interactive simulated water, this is not what you want to do. Um, this is actually a displaced surface using um, a custom shader displacement. So if you're wanting an actual simulated water, this probably won't work for you. But if you're just making a still image, this is probably going to be fine. Um, and you can get something looking pretty good. Um, and with a lot of variation very easily. So um, this, isn't a, this isn't a shader that comes with uh, RenderMan for Maya um, straight off the bat. Um, you're gonna have to download it and install it and I'm gonna show you how to do that first off and then I'm going to go through a couple of the parameters with the shader uh, to get you on your way to making some lovely looking water. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is go to uh, Mr. Akram's website and then go to plugins and shaders and grab AA Ocean Suite. Click that um, and then you want to go to the downloads just here. The version you want is the top one uh, which is AA Ocean Rev 345 latest win. Um, the bottom one doesn't have the render man um, shader in it so grab this one download it to wherever you like um, and then we're going to go through the extraction process. Okay, once you've uh, downloaded it, you'll get this file here. Um, you want to open that up and you want to grab uh, in Maya, uh, Maya 2015. If you're using Maya 2016 like me, uh, it will still work. So grab that and you want to extract these two files um, somewhere which is, are easy to find because we're going to be pointing Maya to them for it to be able to recognize them. I've already extracted them and I'll show you where I've done it. Um, just in my Maya folder, which is in my documents Maya. Um, this is not your Maya installation folder, by the way. This is where your projects and things get stored by default. Um, so there'll be documents slash Maya. Um, I've just created a folder with the, the entire uh, extraction of this zip. Um, as you can see here, just under AA Ocean, Maya 2015, and those two things are there, unzipped. So you will have to unzip it. Um, then you want to go into your 2016 folder and you get this maya.env. If you open this up with Notepad, um, whatever version of Notepad, it just needs to be a Notepad. Open it up, yours will be blank, um, but what you need to do is, um, I'll leave this link, uh, I'll leave this in the description as well so you can just quickly copy it in. But um, it'll be these two lines that you want to paste in. It'll be my underscore plug in path and my underscore script path. Um, and then just the path to those, um, those two folders that we just extracted, um, just written out as so. And like I said, in the description, you'll find the link um, to uh, the, the, the text to how to do that. Um, so paste that in and then that is sorted. The next thing we want to get out of the zip, just going back into it again, um, is under PR Man, uh, RenderMan 19.0. Uh, I'm using RenderMan 20, once again, still works with it. Uh, it's in there under shader, these two files, the .arg and the .dll. Extract these once again somewhere that is easy to type in the path to. Um, I've actually just extracted them, these two particular ones to my C drive. You see AA Ocean Shader and you get those two files there. Um, and now we're going to tell the render uh, Pixar RenderMan how to uh, where those AF files are, so it can actually do the shading. So uh, by default, Pixar uh, RenderMan is under your program files. Pixar, your most recent version, which mine is 20.9 for Maya 2016. We go into etc, uh, and then we want to open up the RenderMan for Maya.ini. If you just double click on that, it will just open it as a text document. Um, and then there is a list which we want to um, assign uh, up the path to those shaders. So if you just uh, control F to find and type in set space R I S A R G S, you're going to find it. Okay, so when you look for yours, um, it will only have this in it. Um, and you can see I've just pasted in 
uh, Ccon slash AA Ocean Shader, which is where those uh, the AIG and the DLL were extracted to. Um, so if you just paste that at the bottom of this list here uh, before the close bracket, then you will be laughing. And then finally, uh, you want to save that. Just click save, close it, and we want to open up the RMS workspace.ini. Uh, open that up, and once again, Control F, uh, and we're going to search for WSSEARCH paths.rix, and that will get you uh, this line here. So we're going to, this is actually a list um, in code, I guess, some sort of code. I don't know much about coding. But um, the, it will be just this here with the at close bracket on the end. So what you want to do after it's got this RMS tree slash lib slash shaders slash, you want to put a space and then type in the path to your um, those two files, the AIGS and the .dll. And then uh, the at and the close bracket will be at the end of that. Save that. If you're having problems saving it, by the way, um, because it's in your program files and like for some reason you're getting admin warnings like I was, uh, just save it onto your desktop and copy it in and uh, copy it into this file uh, and over and overwrite it. Uh, I don't know why I was having problems, but that might be something you ran into as well. Then save that, close it, and installation is complete. Then we're going to get into Maya and do some fun stuff. Okay, so you've got Maya open. The first thing you're going to want to do is uh, create a project and then create a scene in that project and save the scene and make sure it's set to that project. Uh, because we're gonna be working with displacements here, it's gonna to wanna to write the displacements to a project folder. Um, so if you don't have one set up, it's gonna give you issues. Um, so with that said, let's get rolling. We're gonna create a couple of things to get started with. Uh, first off, we're gonna make a plane um, and it's just gonna be a one by one plane very simple and then we're also going to create a sphere and I'm going to reduce its subdivisions and then just give it a, a smooth by pressing through and then I'm going to resize it to be small in the middle of the plane. I'm going to give that the Pixar Disney shader um, and I'm also going to create a environment shader just set to white and um, we'll just make it easy to see things uh, and then we're going to open the hypershade editor and we're gonna create the material for our water, which is gonna be made from the Pixar LM glass. Um, if we do anything else, we're gonna select the plane and then we're gonna assign the material to that. And we're gonna change that, change that to be called water. And we're gonna change the ball to be called ball. Exciting, I know. Um, and then we're going to create our displacement node. Um, so on the left here under renderman RIS, we're going to use this RMS displacement node. And it comes with this guy here, which you don't want because you've already got one. So uh, from the displacement vector, which you see here, you've got an output. Um, you want to drag that output to the displacement shader. Uh, it's telling um, Maya that the water is going to be displaced by this. Um, and then we're going to edit a couple of things in the displacement um, node. So the first thing is displacement space. We're going to change that to world. Um, and then displacement mode. We're going to change that to generic vector. Um, and then displacement amount. Um, hey, pro tip, I've done this before. So I know exactly what my, um, uh, my sizes should be. Um, and for the sake of this tutorial, I did it beforehand so I could check. So uh, and for if, if you're following along and doing exactly what I'm doing, change this to 0.1 for now. It's just going to make it easier. Generally, you'd probably just want to keep this 1.0, but for the size that I'm working in, um, just to speed things up, I'm going to make it 0.1. Uh, but when you make bigger planes, you could probably just leave it as uh, 1.0. Now, let's check if our installation worked, shall we? Uh, click patterns and scroll to the bottom and you'll find your AA Ocean PR man shader there. Let's drag him to the side here. And we're going to connect him to our displacement. So this goes out uh, the, what's it called? Um, out, out displacement RGB goes to your displacement vector and your RMS displacement. So drag from there to there. 
and we're going to change a couple of things before we render as well. Like I said, I've done this before, so I know it should, what it should be. Ocean scale. This is um, how many meters squared um, of an ocean it's portraying. So this is going to be a 50 meter squared ocean, which when you look at the size of this ball, would make that ball quite massive. Um, we're going to change the um, chop to be three. We're going to change the um, velocity, velocity to be five and the wave height is going to stay at one for now and we're going to click render and see exactly what we get all right so as you can see we get a lovely ripply bit of water happening um, i'm actually just going to move that perspective down a little bit so we can see it a bit better and render again um, so you'll have to play around with it to get it ex to look exactly like you want um, but starting off that's pretty convincing water if i do say so myself um, but I'll go through a couple of settings. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do though is change the image color space to be sRGB because that's a very bad habit of mine of forgetting to do that and then having to readjust my lights. Um, so let's go back into the hypershade editor, shall we? Um, now you can see that the, in the render, it's quite choppy. Um, choppy water means high peaks. So the higher this number, the more peaks you're going to get in your chops. Um, the velocity is actually talking about the velocity of the wave. So if you increase the velocity, you get fewer waves, but you get bigger waves. So if I boost this up to 10, for instance, and re-render it, you'll see what I mean. Bigger waves straight away. Um, now you can actually adjust those. So if I split the wave height in half, it will actually affect that wave height. So it smooths it out quite a bit. So you go from that to that. Um, so that's a handy tip. So now we're getting some nice rolling waves with a little bit of rippling and you can see the water sort of cresting over the top there as well. Um, so what else can we do? Well, let's change the wave height to be one again and let's change the velocity to be um, quite low, two. And if we render again, you'll probably see that we're gonna get a bit of a calmer scene. Yeah, so more like um, a lake or something like that. Now uh, there is one other feature that you want to gonna you're gonna want to look at. If we change our velocity back up to what was it five, um, and our wave height to 0.5, actually no, make our velocity 10. So we get some big waves happening. So let's have a look at what that render looks like. Yeah, so we're getting some bigger waves happening. Um, but you can actually smooth these waves out if you want. Uh, the cutoff does this. So basically, this smooths out the the lowest point of the I guess the chops so if you increase this to one and I'll show you the difference between the renders um, it starts to smooth out those chops so see that between the two so it's a lot smoother if you want if you're like mm, I want that to look a little bit calmer but I still want it to be Ripley you're going to want to increase that um, that attribute there um, but by default it should be zero. Now we've got a couple of other things that we need to talk about. Resolution. When you're blocking out your um, your ocean, uh, your water, keep the resolution low. It's going to decrease your render time. Um, basically, the resolution is talking about the map that the um, AA Ocean Shader is using to displace um, the water. So the, with the resolution low, it's going to be a lot quicker in doing it, um, and then seven is going to be your highest um, these are actually talking about different resolutions of a texture map so that's why there's only i don't know why they started on three and ended on seven but hey man i don't know whatever um, seven is your highest so if i do a render at seven it'll take a lot longer but you'll see the difference between this and the last one all right so this is the initial one with the same settings and this is the um, resolution turned all the way up so you can see on the surface you get a lot more finer ripples and it's just generally a sharper image overall uh, 
Okay, so um, that's that. Um, I'll keep the resolution low for now. Seed, um, so this is these maps are generated from like an algorithm. The seed is just what that, what number is fed into the algorithm to create the map. I'm not a math whiz guy, okay? So don't ask me too much about this sort of stuff. If you played Minecraft, you create m maps from seeds as well. So this might make slightly more sense to you. Um, but seed one is probably fine for now. Um, repeat time, this is because, um, I'll put it this way, we'll start with current time. Current time, if I render, well, you've seen that last render. If I step it forward one second, you'll see that it appears as though the um, water has moved slightly so um basically it's it's um it's like animating it essentially um and the repeat time means that you'll get through ten thousand seconds oh, sorry one thousand seconds before you get back to square one um so keep that at zero for now that is fine um fade it um it scales the ocean vector displacement strength it's not something that I've had any luck with doing. You can plug a map into it. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but um, I haven't had to use it. You probably won't either. For the moment, I would say don't worry about it. Um, there's better things to play with in the meantime. Um, I've already gone through all of those. Wind parameters, they're pretty simple. Uh, wind direction is just in degrees, which direction the wind is coming from. So this, the dampening is saying which, uh, whether or not the wind is following the direct, uh, the exact direction of um, uh, of the wind, so um, this means that like if it was 1.0, it's only going to travel on the 45 degree angle with a slight vary. Uh, when it's set to 0.985, it's going to be it's going to have a slight variation, uh, and wind alignment means that it's going to align directly to uh, perpendicular to the wind. Um, and that's pretty much it, really, for all the parameters. Uh, foam, you might have seen this. I'm gonna be super honest, I can't get this to work for the life of me. I've gone through, I've, I've stared at the, um, the render man page for ages and I just can't get this plugged in correctly. So if anyone else uh, has any luck with it, I'll, I'll put a link to, the, to Pixar's page on this shader, but man, I can't figure it out. If you can figure it out, let me know. I'll update the tutorial, but um, yeah, I've not been able to plug it in a way, plug it in in a way uh, that gives me an effective render. I can definitely get it to do something. It doesn't look good though. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it all though. Um, let's look at that render one last time. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with the water. Obviously, I showed you that example at the beginning. Uh, actually, there is one more thing I would like to talk about. You'll notice that the water looks quite dark. Um, that's just the nature of the the glass shader it always does appear quite dark um, you can probably fix this in a couple of ways if you are finding it like if you're trying to get shallow water or something um, and you want it to be slightly more transparent you could adjust the presence and that would allow the light to pass through it more this is going to increase the noise um, in your render so you're going to have to render a lot longer to get a sharper image but that might help you can also use the thin checkbox um, actually, and that should be set to 1.33, which is the refractive index of water. I forgot to tell you that in the beginning. Uh, but let's render it now and have a look. So with thin selected, it makes it significantly more transparent. You can actually see the bottom of the ball peeking out the bottom of the water there. If I turn thin off with the refractive index now adjusted to be correct, you'll see it's basically the same. So the with 1.55, it's a little bit lighter. So you could actually increase that refractive index um, uh, number to be higher if you want it to get a little bit lighter. It, uh, basically what's happening if you're doing that is more lights bouncing off the surface. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much it. If you, yeah, thin, if you've got some shallow waters that you're rendering, might look good. Um, so yeah, anyway, I hope that's helped. Um, I'm sorry I waffled on a little bit in this one. I'm, st I'm still sort of coming to grips with this um, shader and getting my head around all the peripherals, but I wanted to get this one out there because there is basically no information on using this shader. Um, and it's, a real, it's really great. It looks amazing um, for how little work you have to put in to get it to work. The hardest thing is installing it probably, and it's fairly straightforward. And once you know what your uh, settings should be, you're laughing basically and you can get really great looking renders 
in very little time. Um, so yeah, I hope that it works really well for your renders out there. Um, drop me a note. If it has, I'd love to see them. Um, if you like this video, please click the like button so more people find this and hopefully it helps them out because I could find no information on the internet about using this. Um, and subscribe because I do lots of tutorials for RenderMan as you might see on my channel um, and probably some other things for like ZBrush and stuff in the future. Um, so yeah, uh, hope this helped and um, also if you've got any requests for tutorials for RenderMan I'd be happy to give it a shot if I know how to do it or can figure it out like I did with this shader. Um, drop me a comment and I'll get onto that. But until next time, happy rendering.